Okay, these are the chemicals you're gonna need to maintain your pool. You're gonna need some liquid chlorine. You're gonna need a case of acid. You're gonna need a bucket of tablets. I prefer the Pool Season brand. They're really good tablets. They're really slow dissolving and they, they hold together. They don't have ex ex excess paste to clog up your chlorinator or your floater. And they're just a really good tablet. Um, you can also replace the liquid chlorine with dichlor, which is a granular chlorine. And the active chlorine level is really high, it's 55%. And you're gonna need some shock for when you have a party or if your pool starts to develop yellow or just gets cloudy. And this shock has a 70% chlorine level. And this particular brand, Super Shock Wave, is an excellent brand. You want to put the shock in the skimmer directly. You don't really want to broadcast it in the pool because it's really powdery when it when it um, when it starts to dissolve and it makes your pool pretty dusty. And also for colored plasters and vinyl pools, you don't want to throw that in there either. So these are the basic chemicals you're going to need. Now the chemical I use for yellow is this here, Yellow Trine, and the active ingredient is sodium bromide which is the same chemical used in hot tubs uh, in place of chlorine. But when this is mixed with liquid chlorine or with the shock, it creates a combination that kills the algae. Chlorine by itself will not kill algae. You need a chemical to kill the algae. Um, and so you need this yellow trine also. And this is a three pound container. And I'll show you the amount that you're gonna need to treat algae if, you, if it develops. And you get a, you got two different algae brushes. You got this big one here that's pretty good at getting the big spots of algae off. And you got this little one here where you can really dig into it and really brush that algae out. It's very uh, important to brush the algae completely out. So this is really good because it's small and it's eight, you're able to actually get a lot of uh, pressure on that on the wall of the pool to brush that algae out. Okay, and since algae develops usually when there's no chlorine in the pool, um, you want to make sure you raise the chlorine level by putting some chlorine in the pool. But also, as you're treating the algae, you use one cap full of sodium bromide or yellow trine per one gallon of liquid chlorine. If you put too much of this in the pool, this has a t tendency to eat the chlorine actually. So if you put too much of this in the pool not en with, the not a with not enough chlorine in the pool, um, it'll just make it worse and you'll have more algae than less as this eats all the chlorine out of the pool. So you want to do one gallon of chlorine per one cap full of sodium bromide yellow trine. And I'll show you how I put that in the pool. Simply broadcast it over where the algae's at. And as you're doing that, you wanna pour the chlorine right on top of where you poured that. And that, by together, combining together, you actually see the, the water turning a little bit yellow. And that combination will actually kill the algae. So you wanna get as close to where the algae's at and do that process where you sprinkle some of this in along and then you pour the liquid chlorine right after it and it creates that yellow discoloration which means that they're mixing together which will kill the algae. Okay, and a good rule of thumb is you want to err on the side of too much chemicals and not too little. So if this pool was zeroed out here, um, which, is, which is not of course, but if it was zeroed out I would put the whole bag in to raise it up. Maybe two bags just to be sure. And then I would use that yellow trine and the gallon of liquid chlorine. And I can guarantee you that that algae will not reform if you do this process. I just open a bag of shock up and I just pour it in a skimmer just like this and it's very, a very simple procedure. Okay, a good method to distribute the chlorine tablets in your pool is using a floater and you just fill it up with tablets and depending on your pool size usage and other factors is how many tablets you put in. I like to always start with more and then cut back later if necessary. So I have, you know, about three or four tablets in here right now and I have it open all the way and I'll put that in there. And a week later, you check your chlorine level and see if it's too high. If it is, adjust down. You can adjust the chlorinator by turning that blue thing to close off some of that, or put less tablets in. But you always want to err on the side of putting more chemicals in at first. And after you put any chemical in the pool, the shock, the liquid chlorine, or even the acid, I'll wait three hours before you use the pool for swimming. You need to get a good five-way test kit. It'll test for, um, free chlorine and also combined chlorine and the combined chlorine is a reading that's kind of important because it tells you how much chlorine is in the water continuously uh, versus the free chlorine and then pH of course so you need to have these uh, a good test kit here you can also use these strips they're more expensive and if you want to you can use them and they test also for majority of people will have this test kit 
and um, it's one I use out in the field. It does your chlorine level. You want to keep your chlorine level 2.0 to 3.0 in the summer especially. Um, and the pH, you want to keep it between 7.4 and 7.6. PH, a good balanced pH will help the chlorine actually work. If the pH gets too high, 8.2 or above, the chlorine won't be as effective as if the, as if the pH was in that range. If the pH gets too low, below 7.2, um, they want you to add pH up and you know, you get burning eyes and you'll get itchy skin and it will actually damage the plaster in the pool if it stays low for too long. So you want to definitely correct that right away. So we basically fill with water and we're going to do the chlorine test first. So I get solution one, and they want me to put five drops in here. Two, three. And then I shake it up with the cap. And you can see the chlorine in here is pretty high. It's actually been winterized, so, it's so the strip is really easy. You just dip it in, and you pull it out. You let it set, and then you compare it to the colors on the back of the each test, we want one drop of solution 4, which neutralizes the chlorine. We just want to swirl that around. And we put five drops of solution 2 in here. And it comes with an instruction. You can easily follow it. And you can tell that this pH is pretty high right off the bat. And again, this is a salt pool, so it's going to run high for that reason. And definitely, I'll need to add some acid here. And by the size pool here, it's about a 16,000 gallon pool. I'll probably add one fourth gallon of acid. There's also a chart that's included, but the rule of thumb is um, for a large pool, <coughs> if it's reading 8.2 or above, you, which would be large pool, I mean 30 to 40,000 gallons, put half a gallon of acid. If you have a standard pool, 20,000 gallons or less, add one fourth. If you have a small pool, 10,000 gallons or less, you want to add even less than that one. So for the alkalinity, we fill it up just a little bit. There's a line actually marked there, and I'll go ahead and do that test for you. Again, solution four to neutralize the acid in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add two drops of solution 5 and mix it. Okay. And then we're going to add the solution 3, which is going to, and we're going to count the drops until it changes color. Okay, so I'm going to add it 1, 2, 3. I keep swirling it. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so the alkalinity is at 90 right now in this pool, which is good. Um, you want to keep your alkalinity between 80 and 110, and alkalinity is actually tied in the pH. So as you lower the pH, alkalinity drops. So if when I put a fourth of acid into this pool, the alkalinity will drop down to 80 at that point as, it, as it's tied to the pH level. Um, okay, so the acid is pretty easy. Make sure the system is running, and you want to pour just one fourth. I put it here. You don't want to stand where the fumes are going to get you. And that's about a fourth of acid right there into this pool. And that's the level that it, I pretty much want to do. I don't want to go over that with the size pool. And then I'll test it again in another week. And that's how you adjust the pH. You don't want to overdo it by adjusting it too often. Every five to seven days is good. So you get a fairly good balance. Okay, and one last chemical I want to mention before I close. If you use your pool a lot in the summer and you have parties, or if you're going to have a big party, I would recommend getting some of this chemical here. It's called shock trine, and the active ingredient is potassium monosulfate. And what this does, what makes your pool cloudy and people have burning eyes is not too much chlorine. What that is is actually the suntan lotion, inorganic matter, and maybe a little bit of urine leakage that causes the chlor chlorine to turn into chloramine, which causes the kind of like a Windex type effect with the water. It turns it cloudy and it burns your eyes and makes your skin itchy. Nothing to do with the pH or the chlorine, it's actually the chloramines in the water created by the organic debris and suntan lotion, just a lot of usage. So what this chemical does, it's non-chlorine, you can actually go in right away if you throw it in. You just pour, every, for every 10,000 gallons you want to throw a bag in, and that gets rid of the chloramines in the pool. At least I would throw a bag in before a party, and I would throw at least one or two bags in after the party. Oh, it's interesting how when I do this also, this is the tap water in Pomona, California. And you thought, then you thought that pool had a lot of chlorine. Here's just from the tap. So there you go.